Welcome to the Idaho Business Podcast, the only Idaho podcast focused on providing profits for Idaho people. If you love our state and love small business, you are in the right place. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Idaho Business Podcast with your friend, host, and all-around great guy and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Idaho Business Podcast. I am here with Brett Clancy, owner at Christian Brothers Automotive in Nampa, Idaho. Uh, glad to have him here. Good, welcome, Brett. Good. Yeah, we're actually in Meridian. Oh, excuse me, Meridian, Meridian, Idaho. So that's that's perfect. I have family over there, so that's that's even better. Well, we have lots <laughs> of Nampa customers, so <laughs> love it, love it. Well, before we dig in here, I have to say we are sponsored by Sensations. These guys are unfortunately only only located in uh, Twin Falls and Pocatello. Nothing in the Boise market yet. But if you guys Need to get your your tan on, uh, your your mani pedis, your massages, anything to do with your health. You know they have red, red light therapy treatments. They've got all the good stuff for you. Uh, if you go there and mention you heard about the heard about them on the podcast, you'll get your first tan for free. Uh, so go and check them out at their Twin Falls or Pocatello location. So Brett Clancy, he is originally from Seattle, Washington. Uh, studied accountancy at the University of Washington. And uh, he went on and he said a long, long year in the automotive industry, uh, anywhere from, you know, being a sales rep for uh, uh, automotive software uh, to uh, a brief stint in the uh, Chamber of Commerce over there in, I believe, Florida area, the plant yeah. city. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and then he had a, for about eight years, you were, you were the operations manager and then you moved into the vice president position at Auto Body Express. And now, since 2014, over seven years, almost close to eight years now, you've been the owner of the uh, franchise uh, at Christian Brothers Automotive in uh, the Meridian area. Yep. Cool. Well, what what drove you to you know you've been in the automotive industry and well I can't I can't forget this too. You also are a veteran, armed, armed force veteran of the Coast Guard, so I appreciate your service, sir. Thank you. Yeah. No, no problem. Yeah. Um, so being in the automotive industry, let's like let's, let's tackle this question first. What drove you to the automotive industry? Well, um, I went went in to become a, a CPA at the UW after I got out of the military, and uh, about three quarters of the way in there, I figured out that the big main job a CPA does is tax preparation, and there is nothing more hideous and boring and horrible than tax. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in fact, I have not done my own taxes since I was 18 years old. So, because I hated that. <laughs> I love it. So I decided being a CPA wasn't the way, but I thought maybe a, a management level accountant would be it. And so I got recruited by a Freightliner out of the UW uh, to be a, a management trainee for dealerships, and which is kind of how I got into it. And that's Actually, how we ultimately ended up in Florida, I was a controller of a automobile, you know, one of their used truck super centers down there, and kind of got fed up with the whole dealership world. It was supposed to be a year and a half hit, so that's how I sold it to my wife, and uh, <laughs> then I came home and told her we were marooned in Florida, so we were we were there for 18 years. So, uh, but I had a lot of friends in the automotive industry, and as as people know. You know the best way to find a job is find it uh, find it through your friends. And um, mm -hmm. I did I did take a brief, well, a four year journey as an Edward Jones investment rep. Mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, um, the World Trade Center happened about midway through my career, and uh, uh, basically spent two years starving to death. And so went back to the automotive and haven't looked back. So <laughs> sure, uh, well, that's so, great. You like machines and the people, it's awesome. It's been a great career. I like it. I like it. Coming from a uh, family who owned uh, a service station itself in a small town in Idaho uh, and fuel stations, you know, I've been a, I've been in the automotive uh, industry as well pretty much most of my life. 
except for for now we're in the I'm in the cleaning business now so <laughs> so I love I love engines I love beautiful cars so that's it's a fun industry to be in so yeah and it's even greater when it's somebody else that owns it you just get to take care of it oh yeah so I don't have to yeah. wash it. <laughs> that's right that's right okay well let's let's what what kind of spurred you to move from a management and uh you know kind of executive position in these other automotive uh, companies to saying, hey, you know what? I want my own deal. I want I want to move into ownership. I want, want I want my piece of the pie. Yeah, I, you know, I was about 48, and I was thinking, you know, I'm I you know I was running that whole paint company down there, and I thought, well, um, you know, I need to own what I'm doing, and so I approached the owner about buying in as a partner, and uh, he uh, it was really good because I was kind of kind of nervous to ask him, but I thought you just got to ask. And uh, he says, well, my plan is to leave all this to my children. And uh, I said, thank you for letting me know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, he had a couple of kids getting ready to graduate college. He's going to bring them into the company. And and about that time, the, uh, the first location of Christian Brothers opened up in the state of Florida, right near one of our paint stores. So I had I had five paint paint store locations that I was over, and every Monday I had a road trip to go see all my managers, and I watched them build that Christian Brothers. And then one day there's a bunch of guys standing out there in golf shirts, so I pulled in and introduced myself, and then they uh, told me about you know the you know the basis on which Christian Brothers is built on, which is a faith basis, and really like that. And uh, you know the company we were, I was with was also a faith-based company so in my thought was if I'm going to do my own thing I do, I do want to stay in that that uh you know segment of ministry and so uh it was seemed like a perfect fit so went through the went through the process and then uh they approved me for a franchise but they said I was going to have to move and it's like well you know if I'm going to move away from my all my friends and my church and all that, I might as well move back to the Northwest, which is kind of, you know, you know, you, there's no place like home. So yeah. I said, yeah, what do you think about Seattle? And they said, uh, not now, not ever. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, but I thought, well, I could get close. And um, so back, back to my military days, my best friend, uh, he and I saw, um, you know, we were just a couple rednecks, you know, he was from Cuna and, uh, I mean, wait, not to bore you with all the details, but we <laughs> were in New York city together and it was like the two Hicks went to the big city and it was a <laughs> lot of fun. And, and, uh, but we used to always come over here every time we had three days off and, and just have, you know, go out and work on his buddy's farm or go pheasant hunting, you know, in fact, you, you, you used to hit more, hit more pheasants with the car than you did shooting back then you yep. know yeah there was and, a uh, lot yeah so it, it uh, i just thought you know i'd really like to get back there and they we, they looked into it and they they gave me the approval so we uh we planted the christian brothers flag here in idaho and at the time we were the farthest north and farthest west of all christian brother locations so uh, we wow. were a southern company so it was uh they wanted to see if it was going to work up here so that was a grand experiment. So, well, Boise's a great market up there. That the whole area up there. So, yeah, who knew it turned into this? <laughs> yeah, my goodness. Yeah, you guys, yeah, you're floating up there. So, yeah, and more more cars are moving in every every day. <laughs> so, there's more than we can fix. So, I bet, I bet. So, we well, cool. Move in. Yeah. Well, how? How's business right now? Like, you know, from I can say in 20, 2020 was easier year for our industry than 2021 has been. How's it been with you guys in the automotive industry? Yeah, yeah 2020 for us was pretty flat, but uh, we had, a, you know, we had a, you know, when everybody was shut down, cars weren't moving. And when cars mm -hmm. don't move, you don't know they're broken. So mm -hmm. everybody was good. So we had, we had a couple of months you know, during 2021, uh, 2020 that didn't go so hot, but we ended up uh, finishing the year with, uh, you know, at the same level we were in 2019. Good. I, uh, 
I counted that a win because there's really sure. two months there that were just abysmal. And uh, so then we, uh, 2020, uh, 2021 has been actually better, you know, because we haven't been shut down. So, you know, a lot of people working from home, you know, so the miles traveled are less. But um, nonetheless, we've been, we've been, we've been very busy. And uh, that's great. Our big challenge right now, though, is just getting parts. Um, you know, sure. on boats in this in the state of California right now. Oh so, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Parts and, and people. Those are yeah. the two big ones. I think everyone struggles with those two. Yeah, and that's we we've got our struggles there too. So, uh, but you know, we got a couple of uh, young guys we're apprenticing, and uh, you know, that's going to be the the need for the future you're not going to be able to just hire people you got to make them and uh, yeah you know, we've got a great apprenticeship program here so i've got both those guys enrolled in that and they're the two-year program so i've got one guy that's halfway through it and the other guy's just starting so uh that's fantastic yeah so i like it that's the challenge it is what's your what's your favorite part about the business Ah, uh, the people. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's uh, you know, I, I have a the heart of a servant, so it's it's uh, you know, it's not just customers; it's also uh, your employees and your vendors. And uh, yeah, I'm just really blessed. I just we uh, you know, we we deal with nice people, and and uh, both on the vendor side and and our customers, we just you know, we love them, and we got got great great staff here that's um that's great to work for so you know i know guys there's guys in this industry that don't ever set foot in the shop they got a good crew that runs everything but uh i like being here i'm, I'm mm -hmm. part of it and i'm in it and, and on it and all around so it's um you know it's a it's it's a great industry and and uh it's got its challenges i mean we're kind of like Sometimes I feel like we're a cancer doctor, you know, they come in for a, you know, they're hoping it's something easy and it turns into something hard. And, and that's sure. always a hard, hard deal. But, uh, but, you know, most people are, you know, pretty, uh, pretty understanding in this day and age with the cost of new cars. A lot of people are fixing things that sure. five years ago, they wouldn't have fit, you know, made a that's good point. I have this car to go, but we're, We've done more engines and transmissions this year than in our our history. So, wow, yeah, you know, and uh, and then that puts you behind because it was a big job. So they take oh a, yeah, a while, and then you got a guy that's offline that I can't put any more work on. So sure, sure, so, yeah, well, that's great. What's maybe one of the biggest, you know, I say, mistake or also a learning experience that you've had within you know owning your own uh, business so far? Uh, well, you know, um, one of the key, one of the keys to being a good leader, I, I like John Maxwell's 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, and one of them is the law of the inner circle. Um, I, I came up here and and I grossly miscalculated the um, the toll it would take on me to leave my inner circle, all the all you know 18 years worth of relationships. Uh, and come to a place where I didn't know anybody, and uh, it was a lot harder than I thought. And then it was it was hard. Um, it's hard on the family. Um, you know, I had uh, three kids that you know were pretty grown, and my youngest was still in high school. Um, she's actually converted to a, a total Idahoian. So uh, one one son was here for briefly, and then he went to the military, and now he's back in Florida. And then my oldest daughter is here as well, um, but it was hard on them. It was a hard transition, and they were pretty much born and raised in the South, and so it's a different culture. And and uh, I remember when I moved down there, it was a culture shock for me, but it was a culture shock for them to come back here. And to me, it was just like back to the old familiar, you know. And yeah. So those were kind of some tough, tough things there. But I think the biggest thing was just miscalculating what that inner circle does for you because uh, it's a funny sure. thing you look away and you know you talk but it isn't the same as when you meet up meet up with five guys for breakfast once a week and and have those conversations that just take time to unfold and and you know everybody's kids and you know their grandparents yeah. 
you know, the, you know their whole family tree. So, the Idaho Business Podcast is sponsored by Dell's Outdoor Advertising. These guys are an institution when it comes to billboard advertising, traditionally or digital uh, billboard trend, uh, advertising. They are represented from Pocatello all the way to Blackfoot, and they will tell you. Uh, this is a great way, and I will tell you this is a great way to have top of mind awareness for your clients, your p- potential clients. Uh, there are some great things that still can be accomplished in billboards, uh, even even though we're in the Facebook and social media marketing you know realms of the world right now. So if you you contact uh, Rob and you and you set up a three month uh, deal to be on the billboard, he'll give you your installation for free. Or your, um, or your first month for free, excuse me. And again, you can go to idahobusinesspodcast.com, click on their logo, their name, and find their information to get that deal rolling for yourself. And they are fantastic at it. So go see them today. The Idaho Business Podcast is sponsored by New Clean Commercial Cleaning. This is my company, guys. I'm telling you, I'm not just because I'm the owner, uh, the, the creator of it, but uh, we are a great company for servicing uh, your janitorial needs, your carpet cleaning needs, your stripping wax needs, all your floor maintenance needs. We are there for you. Uh, we're all, every, and everything is backed up by the we're not perfect guarantee. And if it's pretty much if we, if you call and we don't get a hold, and they, you don't get a hold of us, uh, we will call you back within an hour and fix the problem within 24 hours or the cleanings on us. So that is our promise to you. Uh, and if you call or go into the Idaho Business Podcast, uh, website, click on the new clean logo and book a uh, janitorial solution huddle with us and mention that you heard about us on the podcast. You'll, ent- you'll get two free office, I mean, the two free restroom floor cleanings for your office for free. Tile and grout in your restrooms will be sparkling clean. And that's that's the offer. Tell you, take us up on it. You won't regret it. There's no strings attached. So go see them today. See ya. This is the end of part one of a two-part episode. Tune in next time to hear part two. Congratulations on spending a couple of minutes getting a little bit smarter, having some fun, and supporting the Idaho business community. If you're feeling the love, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you are. 